welcome to the garden. Today I'm going to be doing some spring cleaning in the succulent garden. So if you're new to growing succulents, today I'm going to show you how you can multiply your plants. I want to start off with my favorite succulent, Crisula perforata. This is a type of stacking jade and it grows beautifully tall. This one in the front is actually so tall it's top heavy. It can't even support itself anymore. So I'm gonna prune this back. This pot has a lot of new growth. So we could prune it back right about to the top so where these other ones are. Or we could go back even further and you can actually see where I've pruned this before. This really woody stem here is the tall one. So if we scoot these aside, you can actually see that large leaf down below is right where we topped it last time. And it shoots out two new points of growth Looks like I've pruned back one, and then the other one has just gone crazy. Look at this thing. It just goes on and on. It's actually really healthy, so we can take several cuttings. So let's prune this right back to where we did last time. Now this is probably going to sprout new growth, because it's got a really healthy root system behind it. This fresh cutting actually needs to heal for a little bit. But because this one is so long, we can take several cuttings and they'll all set down roots. One of my favorite things to do is actually just take the crown. And we'll just snip off the very top, just like that. We'll let this heal for about a day or two until it's not shiny anymore. That means it's calloused over. And then you can just set it on some wet soil. And you can try and leave a little bit of stem on there that way you can bury that under the soil and it should set down roots. But after our crown cutting, I'm going to do portions about maybe four or five inches long. And I usually like to strip some of these bottom leaves. So just be very gentle. Just a slight downward pressure should remove those leaves from the stem. And you can propagate these from leaf cuttings, but they have to start from scratch. This is already a fully formed plant. It really just needs to set down roots and then it can start growing a brand new crown. So let's see how many we can get in about four or five inch segments. And you can take them down even further. These can actually go down to individual leaf segments like this. Bury a bit of that stem and it should grow some roots and then start to grow a new crown from the top. So you do want to keep it upright. Normally you'd want to let these wounds heal for about 24 hours before you plant them out. I actually came up with this method of planting them in dry soil. This is bone dry potting soil. So these will heal in the soil for a couple days and then we'll go and water them in. But it's just about the easiest way to propagate succulents ever. So in total we got six stem cuttings and one crown cutting. And these might not look great right now, but once they start putting on new growth, they should grow all together and look really consistent. That's how you get containers like these. These two pots are just overflowing with plants. Look at all of that growth. They are literally overflowing. <laughs> so the first thing I'm going to do is just cut that back. Look at this. It's been growing so long like that. It's actually started to grow back vertically. <laughs> And it's not the only one, there's one here too. Now this is actually interesting. Let's take a closer look at this. Sometimes your succulents will grow roots from really high up on the stem like this. That usually happens when they're not getting enough water. You can see where this one broke a while back. But there's still enough attached to where it is a really nice healthy plant. Look at those leaves, they look really good. So that's going to make a really nice stem cutting. Again we'll just portion it off and then strip the bottom leaves. In this case, we do actually have that root. That'll give us a huge head start. We could pretty much just plant this out as is. So I think we'll do just that. Right over here, there's a little empty spot. I'm just gonna dig our hole. I'm not even gonna remove the bottom leaves because I don't wanna damage those roots. And then we'll go ahead and water these in tomorrow with all of our other cuttings. So let's just finish pruning these up. I've got a few more on this pot here. And some of them I'm going to cut all the way down. Others we can just 
kind of top at a certain height. And look, it still looks great. Now this one is a little wonky, so I'm just gonna go ahead and prune that. So that one's done and it looks great. We'll just do the same thing with these two, picking a height and stick with it. Just pretty much cut everything above that height. Isn't that a nice little haircut? This one has quite a bit of red on this side. I think this is just from increased sun exposure. Now that we're getting more sun in spring, it's not quite sunburn. It's just a natural transition period. So that's two done. Now we've got one more. This one's not quite as overgrown, but it looks like there's at least three here that are a little bit too tall. So one of them prune back about halfway. This one will prune fairly high. And then this one will prune all the way back. There we go. Perfect. And look at all these stem cuttings. Oh my gosh. I bet you we have seven pots worth. So it's amazing how fast you can multiply your plants. Now this tiny pot is probably okay, but just for some spring cleaning, I'm gonna cut it right back, right about to this little guy. So let's see. Might seem a little drastic, but this is gonna regrow in no time. How cute is that? Now, some of those roots are starting to grow. And look at that one. Wow, it's coming out of the leaf. That can happen, but it's pretty rare. I'm actually gonna remove these because I'm gonna start increasing the amount of water I give them. That'll take care of that root problem and it'll really supercharge them for this spring. And unlike our cuttings, these can be watered in right away. Next up are the sedum clavatum. And these really need some work. This one in the back is quite overgrown, but I'm hesitant to prune it back because it's actually flowering, or at least it's going to flower very soon. Around this time of year, the plants tend to send out new pups, and those usually sprout from the base of the plant. But some of them, like this one up here, you can see are sprouting right out of the crowns, and those are actually gonna flower. So I'm not gonna prune this one yet, even though it's a little overgrown. We do have a few more plants though. This one, has got some nice new growth. And these are really loose. So pruning these back is actually gonna sturdy them up. Believe it or not, these were all individual leaf cuttings. Leaf cuttings are a little different than stem cuttings. Take an individual leaf, and this will actually sprout roots. Eventually, it'll sprout a brand new crown. They basically look like tiny little new crowns like this, but they take a really long time to grow. So to even get this big is pretty impressive just from leaf cuttings. This will actually be the first time I've ever pruned these leaf cuttings. And just like our other stem cuttings, I'm gonna strip these bottom leaves. Luckily, we've actually got a little root there. That's awesome. That'll just give us a good head start. This one's done. This next pot is made up entirely of stem cuttings. Right now they're a little bit thin and starting to lean pretty heavily. So all I'm gonna do is just give them a nice haircut all the way back. Might be a little harsh, but the new growth down here is gonna get a lot more sun and that'll fill in. So now we're left with pretty much nothing but new growth and just the bottoms of the old growth, those are already sprouting new growth. So that'll fill in and really look nice. And even though we've pruned this back pretty hard, I think it looks even better than when we started. And we have all these cuttings. Look at these. These can all be brand new plants. So just like our other cuttings, we'll just strip those bottom leaves. You can save these to propagate if you like. Just set them out and they should set down roots in about a month. And because these have more delicate stems, I'll just take a pencil, just dig a little pre-hole here, set that right in just like that. 
So I'd like to try and get those bottom leaves right about at soil level. And again, we want to let these heal for 24 hours before we water. Feel free to pack them in as tight as you like. They just look all the better. Next up, we'll just check on our jade plants, our snake plants, and our mini calicoe. These are Sansevieria cuttings, or snake plants. And the leaves are setting down roots. So we could probably plant these out at any time. This one's got a nice set of roots on it. And the big one is just an experiment. I'm just trying to see how long we can get this to grow in water, which is something fun I like to do with my succulents. But have a look at those roots, wow. These used to be white, but as they age, they turn orange. But the plant itself looks great. It's even got some new growth down there. Now on to our jade. There's really not much to say about these. This pot is a collection of stem cuttings. And they're growing very slowly but surely. And then these are the main plants. This is where I take my stem cuttings from. And you can tell there's new growth. All that shiny bright green growth at the top. Jade can actually propagate quite well from leaf cuttings. Look at those tiny little new plants. Look at how small they are. It's just amazing. And they come from these big leaves. And all you do is take a leaf, a little downward pressure, just like that. We can let that heal just like our stem cuttings. And then you can either leave it out and just pray, or, or you can actually bury it just a little bit and that stem portion, and that provides a little bit of moisture. You just want to let it dry out in between waterings, just like a normal succulent. And hopefully you'll start to see some new growth just like this. Isn't that just adorable how tiny they are? And last up for today are the mini Kalinkoe. These flower spectacularly right around the beginning of the year. I believe these were imported from Madagascar. And so far, every year I've had these, they've flowered. Because they bloom right around Valentine's Day, they do make great gifts. You can take stem cuttings or leaf cuttings, just like our other plants. These both came from stem cuttings. Further down here, we have a few leaf cuttings. So you can tell they're much smaller. They take a lot longer to grow, so I really do recommend stem cuttings every single time. Really the only benefit to leaf cuttings is that you just get them naturally when you take stem cuttings. So they are pretty much free even though they do take a long time. So I think that just about wraps up today's spring cleaning. Now that we're getting more sun, I'm giving our plants a little bit more water, and this is a great time to add a little bit of liquid fertilizer. So I hope you do some spring cleaning in your succulent garden. Thank you all so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.